Sponsored by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. TrueTechTools.com Dirty Maintenance Show, North Carolina. No heat in the bathhouse. So I'm at this resort in Valley Oaks and uh, they've got one system on a bathroom laundry complex and the systems are displaying auxiliary heat on but the heat temp or the room temperature is 62 degrees I've already looked at the air handler and there's no power to the zone board itself the thermostat has batteries in it for now we're going to leave the thermostat with batteries in it and see if we can figure out why the power is out going to check voltage at the air handler we've got 216 volts AC for high voltage guess we're gonna have to figure out where the low voltage fuse is the wiring for this board is much less than optimal as they're running the board and the thermostats off of the same transformer just jumping off of the RHRC down to the power for the board we found the fuse blown there's a little bit of a dark mark there got my little 5 amp little popper on the circuit for testing purposes this is also a 5 amp fuse so we're well within factory for that we'll go ahead and get the door closed or get power back on and see if we can figure out why it blew the fuse supply static with both zones open doesn't look terrible we'll go ahead and tie in return static and that's less than stellar but as I've heard a couple of old-school technicians mention if it's on the blower performance chart then it's okay I don't know if I agree with that but I guess if it's on the chart, then it is within factory parameters. Lower amps, 1.6, and there it goes. You hear that? That sounds choice. So this wire, I didn't notice it earlier, but this wire is not connected to anything and the tip of it is not chewed up where that would have been bounced into the blower cavity or blower wheel but I'm not sure why I would get that awful noise After seeing that blower relay jumping around, I thought that might be why my fuse blew, but it hasn't jumped anymore, and so I'm trying to see if I can find another place where an, a high amp draw would take out the fuse. I closed the smaller of the two zones, and I've got almost 0.9 inches of water, and the bypass back there is not even trying to flutter open I'm going to switch zones and see what my static does when I close the larger of the two zones so it looks like the two zones are actually pretty well balanced at crap and crap for static that bypass is still not moving at all So I still haven't blown the fuse again, but I think my recommendation is going to be to isolate the zone board power from the power of the thermostat or the system so that we've got a separate transformer feeding the zone board. I just 
just can't be good. Well, the system says it's running, it says it's doing all sorts of things, but the compressor's not running, even though the condenser fan motor is. I'm going to double check that capacitor, see what we've got in that regard. So at this point, the compressor is out on a thermal overload. I'm going to try and cool it down. I've got the condenser fan disconnected with the power on, so the compressor will run when it cools down. Now, if I was seeing high subcooling in cooling performance, but normal operation in heating performance, I would expect that the EEV at the evaporator could be foul. But since I'm seeing high subcooling, ridiculously high subcooling, both heating and cooling, my only fallback is that the refrigerant charge is grossly over. So I'm working on removing refrigerant now and uh, see if we can get it to balance out. After removing some refrigerant and not getting any better performance, I went back to the sensors on the EEV and took both DC voltage readings as well as ohms readings on both of the gas temperature and evaporator temperature basically the liquid and suction line for the EEV and these were my readings so I dug in a little deeper after removing refrigerant did not make the improvements that I was hoping for and I found myself to be a liar <clears throat> Mainly in the fact that the high subcooling in both heating and cooling did not, in fact, indicate a gross overcharge. I think the high subcooling in heating was mainly due to the fact that it was 70 degrees outside, but after removing a couple of pounds of refrigerant, I had a higher superheat and a little bit better subcooling, but not so much. And then when I switched to heating for the measurement, my suction pressure was low, my superheat in heating was high, and my subcooling was less than stellar as well. I took a couple of pictures of my meter reading the sensors on the EEV, what they call the gas temperature and the evaporator temperature. And those numbers are way off of where they should have been for the actual temperatures that the coil was running at. So we're going to follow up on this one with a couple of new EEV sensors and we'll see if that will take care of it and at that time we'll also put in a new fan relay to give us an opportunity to eliminate that chattering of the fan relay. So anyway, that's that for that one. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, and share. Don't forget, if you use the coupon code RARVID at truetechtools.com, you can get $10 off your purchase of $10 or more. It's a one-time usage. We'll see you on the next video. Peace. Thank you.